Coming up tonight, clamp down on crime. The Prime Minister said to present a comprehensive plan on preventing crime and community building. This as the murder count climbs to 11. Plus, new direct flights in the pipeline for three family islands. The aviation director sharing the good news with our news. And later, two Bahamian teens taking over the internet and region. Our Danielle Miller gets them to talk one-on-one -on -one about success and future plans. These stories and so much more as our news weekend starts now. This is our news weekend. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Megan Shepard. The country's murder counts climbing to 11 overnight after a fatal stabbing. Police are questioning a 30-year-old man in connection with the crime. And here's what they say happened. Around 11.50 p.m., the suspect and the victim got into an altercation, and the male victim was stabbed multiple times. He died on the scene. As police investigate the homicide, they're also calling on residents to find better ways to resolve issues. Meantime, police on the island of Eleuthera are investigating a traffic accident that has claimed the life of a man. The incident reportedly occurred shortly before 11 last night north of the Glass Window Bridge and involved a white Honda Accord. Initial reports say the 35-year-old driver was traveling south along Queens Highway with a 23-year-old male passenger when he reportedly lost control of his vehicle and the car overturned. Both men were seriously injured. The driver was extricated from the vehicle, utilizing the jaws of life, but died at the scene. The passenger was taken to a local clinic for medical assistance and was later airlifted to New Providence for care. A team of officers from the Royal Bahamas Police Force Traffic Division will travel to Eleuthera to assist with investigations. Officers from the Marine Support Unit in Grand Bahama arrested a 25-year-old man and confiscated thousands of dollars worth of marijuana. It happened as officers were patrolling in waters near Shoreline Subdivision. That's when they say they saw a man on board a white boat. As they approached, the man attempted to flee, resulting in a chase. During the chase, police say the suspect threw objects into the ocean before officers caught up with him. Police searched the boat and found ammunition along with suspected marijuana. The estimated weight of the marijuana is 39 and a half pounds and its estimated street value is a 559,000 rather $250. Prime Minister Philip Davis set to deliver a national statement tomorrow night where he will detail how his administration plans to clamp down on crime. This strategy will reportedly represent a coordinated effort across government agencies and take a whole society approach to crime prevention and community building. Prime Minister Davis will outline measures aimed at addressing underlying factors contributing to crime such as economic inequality, education gaps, and social welfare issues. Now you can catch that national statement here on our TV, Channel 212, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. The Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce President James Carey weighing in on Grand Bahama's economic situation. He says it's unfortunate that government and the Grand Bahama Port Authority had a public back and forth last year. But it is his hope that the key players have sat around the table to discuss the matter, as a solution is needed to repair the island's economy. The president says Grand Bahamians can see progress on other islands. We're not getting that type of development here. And of course, we have developments going on in other islands and Abacos and Exumers and uh, Eleuthera is bursting at the seams with uh, tourists. Um, uh, so there has to be a formula where things can change here. And um, we just need to determine to, to work together to make it happen. Um, we have the Port Authority. They are in place for another 30 years or thereabouts. Um, and while it may be uh, preferred by uh, the government to see that arrangement go away, um, you know, it is what it is. Kerry revealed that the Grand Bahama business community through the Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce has made several attempts to meet with the Prime Minister, but to no avail.
we're certainly more than available. Um, but you know, we, we work on the basis that we, we do have uh, something to offer to participate. But uh, uh, beyond that, the business community has been very pivotal in sustaining uh, Grand Bahama post Dorian and through COVID. And um, some words of encouragement uh, from uh, the leaders of our, our country, I think, will go a long way in uh, encouraging these, these uh, the, the business houses. Could testing your fingerprint sweat be an alternative method to detecting breast cancer? While technology to do just that is currently under development by researchers at Sheffield Talam University, general surgeon here at home, Dr. Jalicia Bodhi, noting the testing method is still in its early phases and has not yet reached a widespread international platform. While the technology has been previously used for forensics, Dr. Bodhi explains how it will work for the detection of breast cancer. This technology has been around for a while. Um, commonly you use it or it's been used in forensics and it's essentially a way of detecting DNA or, or matching a person to their DNA. So it separates a specimen, whether it's blood, um, whether it's sputum, um, whatever sample it, you get from a person, it separates it into the different molecules that make it up, make up this person. And what this technology looks at is the cancer molecules in particular. Now, should this new method prove successful, Dr. Bodhi says she believes it will be a more appealing method for testing. What it does, it just uses essentially this the sweat from your fingertips opposed to what we have now in terms of testing. The only way you can actually test or diagnose breast cancer now is with tissue diagnosis, meaning someone, this person has to have a biopsy done. So it's a less invasive method, less painful method, um, should it prove to be a, a success. As for when she believes this method could possibly come on stream internationally. It has to go through about four or five phases to say that it's actually safe to use, how effective it is, and looking at the long-term side effects of it. So it, it may be a few years before in terms of coming on stream. Dr. Bodhi also noting cost could be a possible deterrent for adopting the testing method here in the Bahamas. That's in general, not just even for this new technology, but looking at persons um, locally getting mammographies or being able to have uh, staging done with CT scans or PET scan. There is a definite cost barrier. Um, to a lot of persons getting these things done. Over 100 Grants Bahamians have been left unemployed after the closure of Pharma Chem on Grants Bahama. While Prime Minister Philip Davis has said his administration made efforts to step in, Labor Minister Pia Glover Roll says the priority is now to find the impacted workers' alternative employment. The department and the Ministry of Labor, our finger is on the pulse in terms of our workers in the country. We have been engaged in, with PharmaCam statutorily. They had to report um, their winding down. They did that in the time that they were supposed to. So from day one, we were able to engage. Our director of labor has been involved directly with uh, the winding down procedures, ensuring that statutorily the workers will get the proper redundancy pay, um, but also ensuring that we immediately start to identify uh, uh, opportunities for those workers that have been disengaged to find alternative employment. Glover Roll saying it's a priority to ensure the former pharma chem workers aren't disengaged for a long time. Bearing in mind that a company like PharmaChem has employees who have specific skill sets, but we are impo it's important for us to ensure that they're not disengaged for a long time. So if it's something that we can do in the department to assist those workers in finding gainful employment, we're already there with them. Our Director of Labor, Mr. Howard Thompson, he's been there with our Minister of Grand Bahama from day one, um, and our, we've had an open door policy with the PharmaChem executives to ensure that we help to transition those employees in Grand Bahama. Well, we've got a lot more news to share tonight, but first, meteorologist Ian McKinsey joins us now with your first look at weather. Ian.
Thanks, Megan. Good evening, Bahamas. Here's a look now at your Saturday evening forecast. Currently outside our studios, we're under clear skies with a nice temperature 78. Feels like even more comfortable at 71. Winds are from the south southwest at 7 miles per hour. Current temperatures across the country at this time in our nation's second city, Freeport, we have 72, 76 in Marsh Harbor, as well as Governor's Harbor, Luthra, 75 in Alice Town, Bimini, a pair of 78s in Great Harbor Key and in the capital, 77 in Nicholstown, Andros. For the Central Bahamas, we have 76 in Camps Bay, as well as Coburn Towns in Salvador, 77 in Arthur's Town, Kid Island, a pair of 78s in Georgetown and Dedmon's Key, Long Island. For the Southeast Bahamas, we have 79 in Duncan Town, Ragged Island, as well as the Electoral Bay, 78 in Colonel Hill, 79 in Abrahams Bay and Providencialis, Turks and Caicos, and rounding up our temperature profile in the deep south Matthew Town, coming in at 80. Take a look now at our satellite and radar imagery where we have this strong line of showers and thunderstorms racing towards the extreme northwest Bahamas. This should spell some possible unsettled weather, even a severe weather or two across the extreme northwest Bahamas tonight and possibly even into tomorrow. Elsewhere, high pressure remains in firm control across the central and southeast Bahamas. Stick around for extended forecasts. That's still to come. Still to come on Our News Weekend, a $2.5 million investment made on the island of Eleuthera. The Agriculture Minister shares the plan to rejuvenate the country's pineapple industry. Plus, water woes in Exuma. The Education Director gives an update on the impact to the education system. That's coming up when Our News Weekend returns. Doctors Hospital is reimagined primary care. We have invested to improve our health system, ensuring that accessible, affordable, world-class clinical care is closer to you. Your relationship with a primary care provider shapes the foundation of your overall health. Our new, modern primary care facilities are where critical diagnosis and true personalized treatment begin. With locations across New Providence, Grand Bahama, and Exuma, we invite you to experience the Doctors Hospital difference. Book your next appointment at clinics.doctorshoss.com. New international flights are headed to Grand Bahama and Abaco. Director of Aviation and Deputy Director General of Tourism Dr. Kenneth Romer says it is good news for the nation's number one industry. Abaco has been a success story uh, in its own. Uh, in December, we actually uh, saw the uh, JSX Air uh, carrier uh, bringing persons from the Dallas, uh, Manchester, New York, Miami uh, routes. Uh, this is more of a luxury branded uh, experience for Abacoans. It's a seasonal flight, but we have the commitment from JSX that they intend to uh, make this an ongoing service. The island of Eleuthera also expecting new flights domestically and direct from North American destinations. Western Air has given a commitment in principle that they will uh, begin flights. We're optimistic that it's going to happen uh, within the first half of this year. American Airlines will begin service the first week in February in Governor Sabo. But there were concerns about the state of the parking area. Uh, congestion in the terminal area. So we met again with uh, Minister of Works, Airport Authority. There was a consolidated commitment to addressing that. So I'm very pleased that uh, our timeline speaks to having a renovated and expanded terminal in Governor Sabo uh, by the end of January. Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources officials in Eleuther this week, where a $2.5 million pineapple project is being launched in Eleuther. The three-year project is seeking to rejuvenate the country's pineapple industry, which officials are hoping will grow into a thriving export. Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources Jomo Campbell spoke to the project's financing. The in invested capital is about approximately $25,000. Um, and the project is expected to last uh, for a duration of about two years. But, you know, as we grow and we, we develop the project, I'm almost certain that it may require a bit more time and a, a, a bit more um, financing to get us to where exactly it is that we are hoping to be. He says there are plans to host a town meeting with residents to speak to the logistics and dynamics of the pineapple industry. 
The age of the current farmers, what it takes to keep them going, what is required, what is required to inspire new and younger persons to, to come in to ensure consistency in the industry. And we also want to take it a step beyond just growing pineapples. We want to move it into the processing so we can have our own canned pineapples locally grown and canned there in the Bahamas. You know, we use pineapple for pineapple tarts, pastries, jams, so on and so forth. The L.N. Coakley High School in Exuma has been suffering from water challenges. It's caused the school day to end at 12 p.m. daily. And according to Education Director Dominique McCartney-Russell, it's a BPL matter. She says the ministry has been supplying the school with water pumps, but that hasn't been working. Because the school is on a single phase, um, every few months it just burns out the system and so um, it's not enough to handle the load. And so BPL has promised that they're going to put the school on a three phase. The ministry has also engaged the Water and Sewage Corporation to provide holding tanks to ensure school hours return to normal. So that we're able to, you know, ensure children have access to education from um, nine to three and not half days. So how soon before they can return to that normal schedule, you think? I would have to connect with the personnel at BPL. I'm not certain, but they did advise us that they, they are on it. They're, they're really seeking to um, get that done as soon as possible. When our news weekend comes back from the break, the Governor General makes her first official visit to Grand Bahama. Her first stop, a special visit to the precious pearls of the nation. Plus, making school campuses safer. We'll tell you about the Ministry of Education's newest student development unit. We have the details when our news weekend returns. When the Bahamas took center stage at World Expo in Dubai 2022, we were there as thousands got up close and personal with our story, like the unprecedented devastation of Hurricane Dorian, put center stage at Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Rwanda. We were there as the Prime Minister urged immediate action on climate change, an issue brought up months later at the historic 50th CARICOM meeting in the Bahamas. Because our news is everywhere, always there when it counts. Welcome back. Grand Bahama welcoming a special visitor this past week, Governor General Cynthia Mother Pratt. Our news team was there as she made her first stop at a local senior citizen's home. Italia Hall reports. I've been dying to see you for a long time. I say, if there's anybody who could help, it's Mother Pratt, because she helps everybody. It was a warm welcome for Governor General Cynthia Mother Pratt as she visited some of Grand Bahama's precious pearls at the borough's home for the aged, along with Minister for Grand Bahama, Ginger Moxie. Owner of the home, Irene Barrows, explaining the condition of some of the residents. He can't walk. Yeah. So most of my people are like that. She also expressed concerns about the home's high electricity bills, as she has said in past interviews that the reason for the high energy consumption is the need to wash multiple loads of laundry per day for the residents. Today I owed 2500 and they threatened to cut me off. And I had to go and borrow and borrow and what like to need. I guess I should say some solar panel to help with this old power bill. This resident in total awe as he was able to meet the governor general. You all right though? All is well? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All is well. Okay. All is well. Yeah. Good to see you now. Yes. Okay? Okay, yeah. take okay. care now. Thanks so much, Italia. Well, the Ministry of Education is looking to launch a student development unit that will produce programs aimed at preventing school violence. According to Education Director Dominique McCartney-Russell, the plan is to partner with civic organizations for after-school programs. In many cases, we're duplicating effort. We're seeking to ensure that all of our children have access to co-curricular and extracurricular activities because of the advantages that they provide. And so we have invited a number of our partners to um, continue to partner with us to provide these mentoring services. It comes as school resource officers have been placed at campuses throughout the capital for school policing. Over the years, there have been multiple instances of violence between high school students. The education director outlining some of the initiatives they hope to implement. 
In some instances, um, anger management sessions, increased anger management sessions, increased counseling, more restorative practices um, we're um, instituting. And so that will be launched on Monday of next week. Well, still to come, kicking off the new year by giving back. Sandals Hand, the Foam Foundation partner to make a difference. Plus, getting to business. Teen TikTok sensations talk future plans with our entertainment correspondent, Danielle Miller. Stick with us. When the Bahamas took center stage at World Expo in Dubai 2022, we were there as thousands got up close and personal with our story, like the unprecedented devastation of Hurricane Dorian. Put center stage at Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Rwanda. We were there as the Prime Minister urged immediate action on climate change, an issue brought up months later at the historic 50th CARICOM meeting in the Bahamas. Because our news is everywhere, always there when it counts. Welcome back. The holidays may be over, but the gift giving continues. Sandals Royal Bahamian recently collaborated with Families for All Murder Victims for their inaugural community initiative for the year. I happened to be there as residents were showered with gifts. Free school supplies, new and used clothing, a hot lunch, and numerous smiles lit up the faces of grateful recipients. Sandals Royal Bahamian and Families for All Murder Victims, known as FOAM, have been partners for several years, making a tangible impact in the community through their collective efforts. Sandals Public Relations Director Renee Delion Lightborn and Candy Gibson, FOAM's director, emphasizing the significance of these giveaways. Usually we are here for our annual Christmas toy drive. We were not able to come down to foam for Christmas, so we decided that we would come and treat the community members for the new year. So this is actually our very first initiative for the year 2024, and we are really, really elated to be here this afternoon. We just here to give back. We love to see joy um, on um, family faces, especially this time, and many the children. The children deserve to be happy. They didn't ask to come here. We want to see a smile on their face. Gibson is also encouraging others that can to give back or volunteer when they can. This type of initiative is very important, especially the fact that, you know, that um, grocery items have gone up, um, even clothing has gone up. And so therefore, just being able to give someone a free meal, you know, a lot of persons, a lot of kids don't even know where their next meal is coming from. So the mayor, if I could, you could partner with an organization, a charitable organization willing to give back is very important. Dillion Lightborn says that Sandals values the communities in which they operate and believe in giving back, adding that their reaction, smiles and gratitude of those on the receiving end makes it all worthwhile. And sometimes when you come into these communities and we get the feedback from parents or when we go into schools and we get the feedback from teachers, we are so moved. It really goes a very, very far way. I know firsthand just how Sandals Foundation has seen th children through school, through college, and they have helped to, you know, create a better standard of living for themselves and for their families. So this is very, very, it's of utmost importance to us. The event, she says, a testament to the positive impact collaborative efforts between businesses and community organizations can have on the lives of those in need. Reporting for Our News, I'm Megan Shepard. And now our Ian McKenzie is back with your extended weather forecast. Thanks, Megan. Welcome back, everyone. Here's a look now at your extended forecast. We have high pressure across the central and southeast Palmas. This, however, should begin to slide eastwards in response to this cloudiness all associated with a cold front that's making its way through the northwest Bahamas. You can see an uptick in moisture, and this could spell showers, possibly even isolated thunderstorms across the area tonight and into tomorrow. Take a look now at your boating forecast across the northwest Bahamas. We have a small craft small craft caution rather that should come into effect on Sunday. Winds will be westerly, shifting northeast to east after that frontal passage, 10 to 15 knots, but even bumping up to 15 to 20 knots after the passage. Seas 2 to 4, building up to 4 to 6 feet after the passage. High tide at 9.23 p.m. tonight, low tide at 3.30 a.m. tomorrow morning. For the central and southeast Bahamas, winds will be east to southeast, 10 to 15 knots, seas 2 to 4 feet, beautiful boating conditions across that area. Here's a look now at your national forecast. And in your extended forecast, we still will have some showers, unsettled weather, continuing into Monday, courtesy of that 
frontal boundary that is expected to stall just south of the capital. Tuesday should be some clearing. However, we expect another cold front to push through on Wednesday, increasing rain chances. Gradual clearing Thursday through Friday. Another strong, potent one should push through on Saturday that should bring things down into next weekend. That's your wrap on your evening forecast. Make it a great, safe, fun night, everyone. The term, get them Reggie, has become a popular saying in the region over the last several months. Coined by two Bahamian teens, our Danielle Miller joins them on the block where it all started. She tells us how they've now set their sights far beyond internet popularity. Get them Reggie, show them what bees do. Emerging from a TikTok video, the phrase, get them Reggie, paired with a distinctive one-two step, has become a ubiquitous part of our daily language, extending its influence from Junkanoo celebrations to countries across the world, Guyana, Trinidad, and the U.S. among them. Yet, the question remains, who is Reggie and why was he getting them? Enter Reginald and Tamer, two ordinary teenagers who stumbled upon this catchy phrase while joking around one day as they worked on a car radio system in their neighborhood. Reggie loves to gyrate so. I just put the camera on them because I know how to catch him in a moment. You know, when he started getting them, that was it. Basically, you gyrate myself, six fixing the. <laughs> still fixing the car with the, the music. Like me, I just love music. The video was posted and instantly went viral. I was at the Jonkanoo Shack trying to get out for boxing. And then I keep looking at my phone. I don't know data though. So I went to the gas station with data on my phone. And when I scroll and I went on TikTok, I see 99 plus. But I was like, that's regular. But when I press it and my phone keep bringing up, bringing up, bringing up, I was like, never. And then he come back to you. I see him night and say, do you see the video? So I end up looking on TikTok. And I was like, whoa, she up there for real. Air's parents disapproved of the language used in the original video, demanding he took it down. He tells me he was later punished. However, by then, thousands of users had already downloaded the video, repurposing the sound for their own parodies. As requests for appearances and endorsements poured in rapidly, the boys say they recognize the need for a manager. And now, the two are selling out venues nationwide to enthusiastic fans. The teens say they are fully aware they cannot squander this opportunity. They've got their sights set far beyond internet popularity. I love to play music, so I want to be a musician when I grow up, so I'll be in college taking up music, but I'll still be doing my little TikTok there and there, still be doing them type of stuff, so yeah. In five years, I'll see myself as a business owner. I can't say as yet, but I think I'll still be an influencer, an entertainer. But our pages are big right now. I feel like it will still be big as, as we continue to make content, but it's going good so far. Reggie tells me he wants to inspire young people worldwide to always choose positive paths. He had this message for anyone doubting their success. I really don't care what they say about me or what they say about it because like, they don't know what I get behind it and I don't have to tell anybody what I get behind it, but just know that I get paid for what I do. Reporting for our news, I'm Danielle Miller. Thanks so much, Danielle, and thank you for joining us for our news weekend. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Megan Shepard. Have a safe and wonderful weekend.